you need to get somewhere, you can always walk or run. But when you need to get somewhere fast, you jump in a car, fly in a plane, or find some other mode of transportation. And nine times out of ten, those forms of transportation run on fuel made from oil. Crude oil, a thick, viscous material buried thousands of feet beneath the earth, lying underneath layers and layers of dirt, rock, and water for millions of years. But how did it get there, and how do we get it out? What do we do with it, and why is it so important in our daily lives? You know that oil lies deep beneath the surface of the earth, but where did it come from? How long has it been there? What does it taste like? We will take our word for it. You don't want to taste it. Let's start by looking back in time, long before your parents or their parents or even their parents' parents' parents. You get the point. Before TV or radio, before the redwood forest or the Grand Canyon, millions and millions of years ago, it's here we find what most believe to be the beginning of oil. You see, oil is a fossil fuel, meaning it's a fuel source formed from the remnants of an organism when decaying animal and plant material is broken down to carbon and hydrogen. Oil, gas, and coal are all fossil fuels, but it's probably not the big guys that produce the bulk of the fossil fuel. It was the little guys, small plants and animals, tons of tiny microscopic critters, and billions of pounds of small plant life. When they died, they sunk straight to the bottom of the sea. Once there, the decaying matter mixed with mud and silt. It's here oil gets its start in the ooze and goo on the ocean floor. Over time, hundreds of feet of mud containing the organisms accumulated, creating a slimy mass. But how did this become oil? Well, it's just like cake batter. You have to cook it before you get a cake, and you have to cook the slimy mess before you get oil. So Mother Nature now has to put this in an oven. So she takes sediment, tiny fragments of larger rocks broken down by rain, sun, wind. In other words, erosion. Over millions of years, many layers of sediment pile on top of the goo and ooze. The weight of all of these layers of sand builds up, creating pressure, compacting everything underneath it. And after millions of years, layers of sedimentary rock form. The rock compresses the goo into a fraction of its original thickness, and the heat caused by this incredible compression transforms the organic material into a new substance, kerogen. Crude oil and natural gas are formed from kerogen. They migrate upwards through porous rock until it is trapped by layers of non-porous, harder rock. Today, the oceans of long ago have shifted, leaving oil beneath dry land as well as underneath the ocean floor. But how do we find oil? Is it over here or is it over there? Most would never know. But there are some that do, or they can certainly narrow it down. No, not fortune tellers or even the psychic hotlines. Oil is found by scientists, chemists, biologists, geophysicists, geologists, engineers, and computer scientists. All work together to pinpoint where the oil might be. Using different field instruments, they gather information that narrows down its location. Instruments like seismographs and thumper trucks, trucks with large metal plates that strike the earth, creating sound waves. Seismographs record these sound waves, creating a detailed map of those rock layers. All of the information gathered, from maps to the chemical analysis of rocks, geological structures, rock formations, all of this data creates a pretty accurate idea of where the oil is located. But once we find it, how do we get it out? Well, there are companies called drilling companies that know everything about drilling through the earth to the oil. Once scientists narrow down where they think oil is, a drilling company sets up a drilling rig. This structure holds the pipe that's attached to the drill bit. The drill bit turns and slowly works its way deep into the ground, chewing up everything in its path. As the bit cuts through the earth and rock, a substance called drilling mud is pumped through the pipe. It comes out of the hole at the end of the drill bit. The friction between the rock and the diamond-studded teeth of the bit creates a lot of heat. Drilling mud cools down the drill bit, but it also does something else. Once the mud goes all the way into the ground through the pipe, it floats back up to the surface. As the mud rises, it brings with it chewed-up rock created by the drill bit called cuttings. There, a geologist collects the cuttings. They're then analyzed to determine if oil and gas are present. 
Many days are spent drilling for oil, and hopefully, with all of the information gathered from scientists and engineers, computers and seismographs, you'll strike oil by themselves. They require the muscle and sweat of some of the hardest workers around, oil field workers, tool pushers, who oversee the drilling crews that work on the rig floor. They're in charge of coordinating all drilling operations. Drillers, directly responsible for drilling the hole, supervising other crew members and operating the drilling controls. Derrick hands, who handle the upper end of the pipe as it is hoisted out of or lowered into the well hole. They're also responsible for circulating machinery and the conditioning of the drilling fluid. Getting up to the surface. Time for the pumping unit. This piece of machinery pumps the oil out of the earth into storage tanks. There, the oil is tested by a gauger who measures and tests the crude oil for water, sediment, and other impurities. He takes a sample from the storage tanks, places it in a centrifuge, and measures those impurities. Some do take it back to the laboratory, but many test it right there in the oil fields. From these storage tanks, the crude oil is collected by tanker trucks or sent straight by a pipeline to the refinery. At the refinery, the crude oil is distilled in a fractionating column, a building where oil is cooked until it vaporizes. As the vapors cool down, they separate into gasoline, heating oil, lubricating oil, and wax. This process is called fractional distillation. But it's not just fuels, heating oil, lubricants, and wax that come from crude oil. There's much, much more. You see, when oil and gas are converted to chemicals, they are called petrochemicals. These petrochemicals are the basic ingredients in plastic. So everything from sunglasses to outdoor furniture comes from plastic. Garbage cans, thousands of things, all made from plastic. But that's not all. Synthetic rubber is made from petrochemicals. The same rubber found in tennis shoes, skate wheels, and tires. The natural gas that goes to the power plant to make electricity comes from petroleum. The same natural gas that heats your home and cooks your food. Gum, candles, soap, and crayons all begin with oil. Even medicines, aspirin, antihistamine, all of it begins with oil. The soap on your face, shampoo, hairspray, lotion, cologne, baby oil, suntan oil, eyebrow pencil, nail polish, hand cream, shaving cream, even lipstick, all made from oil. That's why every American will need an estimated 20,000 barrels of petroleum in their lifetime. And why our country consumes almost 20 million barrels of oil a day. Although most oil in the United States is imported, you'll find oil wells all over the United States. From the plains of Oklahoma and Texas, off the shores of Louisiana and Washington. But you don't have to travel far to find a very large supply of oil. You see, there's a huge underground structure that contains millions of barrels of oil in the south-central part of the country. It's called the Illinois Basin, a geological bowl, reservoirs of petroleum beneath southern Illinois, southwestern Indiana, and western Kentucky. That, at one time, held over 8 billion barrels of oil. These oil reservoirs are large rocks with many holes or pores holding petroleum, much like a sponge holds water. About 150 years ago, the search for oil and gas began in this region. Over 150,000 wells have since been drilled, and more than 4.3 billion barrels have been extracted. Today, approximately 4.1 billion barrels remain. Almost 700 named oil fields are found in the Illinois Basin today. But there are many exploration and production sites that have also dried up or been abandoned. As an environmentally conscious industry, we want to see the land and water protected for future generations. The Illinois Petroleum Resource Board is an industry-funded effort. Our purpose is to find and remediate exploration and production sites that have been abandoned or left unclaimed. By removing equipment that has been left and by bringing in dirt and planting trees, flowers, and grasses, we can restore these sites to their natural ecological state. Using funds from the industry, we work hard to protect the land and drinking water. Oil, keeping the country moving with fuel and tires made from rubber, keeping the country healthy with medicines and medical materials made from plastic. Petroleum, the basic ingredient for so many products that make our standard of living so much better and our lives so much easier.